The changing from summer to fall can be reflective and motivating to continue our daily spot check inventory to continue growing in the direction of our higher power. We are either going toward God or we are going toward a drink. F. Scott Fitzgerald said, First you take a drink, then the drink takes a drink, then the drink takes you. Liquor is but a symptom. When we remove the alcohol, all that remains is the ism. And that can be a frightening realization. With a higher power, we get rid of the causes and conditions to live a happy, sober life. We're going to start with the serenity prayer, and then we'll go into the daily reflections. If you or someone you know are questioning yourselves about whether or not you're an alcoholic or whether they are an alcoholic or drug addict, reach out. We can help you. You don't have to do it alone. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Grant me patience with the struggles that take time, and appreciation for all that I have, tolerance of those with different struggles, and the strength to get up and try again, one day at a time. October 20th, solace for confusion. Obviously, the dilemma of the wanderer from faith is that of profound confusion. He thinks himself lost to the comfort of any conviction at all. He cannot attain, in even a small degree, the assurance of the believer, the agnostic, or the atheist. He is the bewildered one. Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, page 28. The concept of God was one that I struggled with during my early years of sobriety. The images that came to me, conjured from my past, were heavy with fear, rejection, and condemnation. Then I heard my friend Ed's image of a higher power. As a boy, he had been allowed a litter of puppies, provided that he assumed responsibility for their care. Each morning, he would find the unavoidable byproducts of the puppies on the kitchen floor. Despite frustration, Ed said he couldn't get angry because that's the nature of puppies. Ed felt that God viewed our defects and shortcomings with a similar understanding and warmth. I've often found solace from my personal confusion in Ed's calming concept of God. Those of us who came into the Alcoholics Anonymous community as members of a religion or believer in God often suffer more growing pains than one who had no belief at all, for they have to unlearn before they can come to believe in a power greater than themselves, as they understand him, that will solve their problem. Those of us may have a sense of obligation to the religion of our parents' concept of a god. And in AA, we get to choose whatever model of a deity works for us, as long as it is outside of us. Finally, when all our scorecards read zero, and we saw that one more strike would put us out of the game forever, we had to look for our lost faith. It was in AA that we rediscovered it, and so can you. As we stay sober and live the steps in our lives, we pray and meditate to the God of our understanding, and that God evolves and strengthens. As an old-timer said, I don't know what God is, but I know there is a God, and I am not it. Simple as that. We are willing to believe and rely absolutely on it. It is the easier, softer way. We came for our drinking, and we stay for our thinking. When we give our problems or concerns to our spirit of the universe. We unburden ourselves and grow closer to our creator as he proves over and over he can and will handle it for us. Our thinking is cleared up and we can refocus our energies on how we can be of service to others. We have grown in the program and we realize we have been forgiven and we are accepted for who we are and we want to treat others with the same respect. We try to live the golden rule We treat others as we wish to be treated. God is in everyone, and we never want to treat God poorly. That is what we are doing when we look down on anyone or do anyone any harm. Human beings do human things. We sin. We sometimes do harmful things. God is all-powerful, and he forgives and loves. We now do our best to pay it forward with kindness and acceptance to all, including ourselves. October 20th, solace for confusion. Obviously, the dilemma of the wanderer from faith is that of profound confusion. He thinks himself lost to the comfort of any conviction at all. 
he cannot attain, in even a small degree, the assurance of the believer, the agnostic, or the atheist. He is the bewildered one. Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, page 28. The concept of God was one that I struggled with during my early years of sobriety. The images that came to me, conjured from my past, were heavy with fear, rejection, and condemnation. Then I heard my friend Ed's image of a higher power. As a boy, he had been allowed a litter of puppies, provided that he assumed responsibility for their care. Each morning he would find the unavoidable byproducts of the puppies on the kitchen floor. Despite frustration, Ed said he couldn't get angry because that's the nature of puppies. Ed felt that God viewed our defects and shortcomings with a similar understanding and warmth. I've often found solace from my personal confusion in Ed's calming concept of God. Carpe the diem, boys and girls. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.